side. The general news for La Republic du Cameroon isn't good. It isn't good at all. This is what is happening to them. Listen, take a look there. That is what is happening to them. That is what is compelling them to an emergency security meeting today. They are counting their corpses in numbers. Again, they are counting their corpses in numbers. That is it you see there. Those are falling La Republique du Cameroon soldiers. And they haven't seen anything yet. They haven't just seen anything yet. The days and the months ahead will be some of those months they never phantom about when they went about declaring war, declaring war on us. Let, I can assure you, fellow Ambazonians out there, La Republic du Cameroon is regretting the decision of their president on November 30th, 2017, when he stood at the airport in Yaoundé and declared war, declared war on our territory. It is close to five years, and they continue, they continue to count their corpses, as you can find, as you can find, find it on your screen. Uh, today, today we woke up in the morning to find out what our restoration fighters in Ingo Ketunjia uh, did. I am referring to the boys of General No Pity. General No Pity in the Bambalam, the Ngo Ketunja Marines, as they call it. The images that you see, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you these uh, images. The images that you see here, coming from Indab, coming from Ngo Ketunja, is a sign, it's only a sign of what lies ahead. Again, that is only a sign of what lies ahead. The days ahead, the days ahead, they are not looking good at all for La Republic du Cameroon Army and their government. They have been told from day number one by people in the international community that they cannot win this war, that they should succumb to dialogue and negotiations, that they should get to Swiss and negotiate with Ambassonia and they would not do it. They thought with their money, with their ammunition, with their firepower, they can overcome us. They can kill every one of us with submission. Unfortunately, unfortunately, what you see on your screen is directly the opposite of what they expected. We have seen, we have seen, ladies and gentlemen, in the past few weeks, Incidences like this ones, incidences like this ones, and they continue to happen. They continue to happen, and La Republic du Cameroon is now holding security meetings in Yaoundé today, as we learn, trying to figure out, trying to figure out what they can do, what they can do to avert the level of calamity the level of calamity that is taking place against their own soldiers. I will not take much of your time because I got a very important announcement to bring to you. Please stay tuned. I will, I'm joined now by the chairman, the chairman of Ingol Ketunjia uh, County, uh, Comrade Frank uh, Chen Yi, who will brief all of us on what took place in Ingol Ketunjia in his own county yesterday. Comrade Frank, it's a pleasure to have you back, sir. Thank you, Secretary Chris. Thank you, fellow Ambazonians or ABC viewers. Thank you for tuning in. This is Chairman Frank of Ngokutunja, and I'm happy to be with you here, Secretary Chris. Thank you, Chairman Frank. Uh, it's a wonderful day to be alive and be part of this struggle. Uh, please tell us uh, what what happened in Ingo Ketunja, your own county, uh, yesterday and today. Once more, Secretary Chris, let me use this opportunity to thank 
all the Amazonian restoration forces that have put their lives in line to defend our territory from the hands of these colonial enemies that are making sure that our parents, our people are suffering despite the natural resources we have. Yes. I want to salute a 21 gun salute to General No Pity of the Marine Forces in Gokutunja for a wonderful led mission. And Secretary Chris, this is just the beginning. The final battle days are now with us. We will pursue La Republic out of our territory come rain come shine yesterday the 29th of april 2021 the ambazonia restoration forces of ngokutunja were tipped that some black legs with the military had entered our territory and three civilians were arrested and it was obvious that the civilians were somehow related to our restoration forces. When the general of the Marine Force of Bambala heard this, he immediately rallied his troops and decided to pursue the vehicle that was carrying our people. The vehicle went out of the county and out of Amazonian borders, and yet our boys were brief to follow them. Okay. Finally, they came face to face after they went and moved and moved our people into lockdown. They came face to face with the enemy, battled them for hours, had some casualties, but did neutralize everybody over there and decided to harvest their equipment. In the process, La Republic had been notified of backup and because backup came in so close, they were not able to harvest everything they really wanted. But as you can see on social media, what they harvested is clear evidence that they are determined to save motherland, Chris. Now, what time did this happen yesterday? I got up in the morning and saw this. I thought it happened this early this morning there. No, it all started yesterday in the afternoon when La Republic terrorist military entered our territory and picked up some civilians. Then, once the information circulated, our boys followed that vehicle late that evening. But this battle was all night until early this morning they were returning with victory back into Amazonia. Wow. And uh, we have seen the weaponry, as you can find on your screen, that our boys were able to confiscate from La Republic du Cameroon. We also find uh, a half hand, a half hand, uh, they caught and brought along with them as evidence of the battle fought. Uh, tell us, do we know uh, how many of these weapons our uh, fighters were able to confiscate? Yes, Secretary there were nine weapons in Torah. Um, if my defense chair was here, he would have elaborated the various kinds. But I think, to the best I, of think my I think they look more than nine in my eyes. They look it, it appeared like they're more than nine. No, there were two chain cutters, as they call. There yes. were two Mark fours, and then there were five AK type weapons. Now, if there are more weapons there, there will be the weapons of our restoration forces that masterminded this mission. But the report we have is they came back with nine weapons. The tenth weapon they were about to pull from a truck that was standing at that vicinity became a little tough. And that's why when the backup came, they decided to fight their way back into our territory than hang over there. The backup came from where? Presumably when they arrived, 
after tracking this team where they took our three civilians to when they arrived at scene the same commander whose hand was lying on the ground and his epaulets had already messaged on the radio that there was an attack at that station so the neighboring stations all now were kind of driving towards this same location but before they could get there our boys already did a lot of damage to take down everybody at that station and then was now harvesting their stuff when backup actually got there wow so uh, what is the mood what is the mood in the in, in go ketunja today uh you have learned of the security meeting in yaonde today what have you heard well secretary chris let the enemy know that we have our palm wine in Gokutunja and we are celebrating at this time the boys have set their traps and they are drinking let them come we are ready for them if any la republic soldier still feels they can die for that old dictator let them come the traps and the cannons are all activated they will die in their own bullets i mean it they will die in their own bullets all the restoration forces are fully activated and all the entrance points of Gokutunja have been sealed any attempt will meet fire and brim in Gokutunja moving forward. Now, the trouble for La Republic du Cameroon forces uh, out there in, in Gokutunja is that they now know, they now know, with a caliber of ammunition confiscated from them, that the boys are well equipped. Correct? Excellent, Secretary Chris. They know. It will be their own bullet that we will use to take them down. We came out for a peaceful request, but our peace, our calmness, the thought was foolishness. This is the moment we are ready to show them. The battle line has been drawn and the final battles have been engaged. We will fight till Ambazonia is free. And let me use this opportunity to call on all restoration forces, wherever you are, be alert, be alert, be alert. We have to stand up and push these enemies out of our territory. Without mixing words, the battle line has been drawn and we are ready. Now, uh how about the security of our fighters we want to believe that they are all uh, very much safe yes secretary chris everybody is safe uh, we had a few um, injuries that have been taken care of uh, the rest of the restoration fighters are in good mood they are happy if you watch the video this morning when the the the, the, the spokes general was presenting the equipment you saw them dancing they are celebrating and uh, waiting for la republic if they think they can sneak themselves in now we know the number of uh, ammunition confiscated uh, from them do we know the number of casualties on them well from the estimate the general gave us he estimated more than 15 went down, but he could readily count up to 15. Oh, he could readily count up to 15 uh, a lot of public soldiers killed? Yes. It was a whole brigade that was taken down. It wasn't like a battle on the street, no. Right. They were pursued into their house, and everything went down inside that house. Wow, that is uh, just some incredible, incredible news there. And uh, uh, I think Ambazonians should be very, very excited uh, with this uh, kind of news. I hope that this news coming out of Ngo Ketunjia brings some, uh, some uh, 
uh, excitement, excitement in the community in preparation for the draft, for the draft that is coming up. Yes, Secretary Chris, let me take this opportunity once more, once more to reiterate the importance of our draft. Um, I was on your show a couple of days ago lamenting that the only last standing parastata in Ambazonia was so, and we promised hell to La Republic for stepping in our territory to take everything we have. This is a continuation of what we promised them. I want to plead on the people of Ambazonia. I want to plead on the people of Ngokutunja in particular. Please let's support our restoration forces. Let's support our counties. Let's support the interim government. Let's support our one and only president, Dr. Sam Samuel Ekomesako. Our agenda is very pure. We are out to deliver Ambazonia to the people of Ambazonia. And the restoration forces are ready to do this job with a minimum support from us. If we can chip in something, if we can pay our draft on time, we will see spectacular results coming out from our territory. For those who are still sitting on the wall, know that the time is now. La Republic is going to bow. This is just the beginning. Food is going to cool off their tables. Their dinner is going to get cold because we will make sure those two cubes of sugars will never dissolve in that sea. And we will come out like a shooting star to take our people and flag to Boya. God with us. All right, all right, uh, comrade. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great day. It's a great day. And we see this happening all over, all over Amazonia. Uh, this is the firepower that I believe every Amazonian has been asking, has been asking out there. And finally, it is here. We can feel it and we can see it. Thank you for joining me, sir. Thank you, Secretary Chris. Thank you, our Restoration Forces. We are proud of your effort. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I will now uh, get uh, somebody online from uh, Bamenda to join me with uh, the atmosphere, how things uh, they look like there on the ground in Bamenda with this news. We have again learned of an emergency security meeting holding in Yaoundé today. Again, ladies and gentlemen, there is fear, fear, fear in that country. Hello, sir. Uh, Martin, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Good evening. Good evening, please. Good evening, sir. Uh, tell me, tell me, what is going on there in the in Bamenda and of course the rest of the state. <laughs> the past week has not really been easy. Eh? The dynamics on the ground has changed. Everywhere is bubbling. From Bui, Ngokutunja, Bafut, Bali, right down to Lebialem, everywhere is bubbling. There is chaos on the ground. The French Cameroon soldiers are not finding it easy. A series of attacks have come from the Bui warriors. I don't know. Might be. I don't know if people have been getting the information. Yes, indeed. Uh, we and, get. And, we, and, we, and, and, we get all of it. We get all of it. Uh, actually, I spoke with uh, the Bui warriors, uh, General Hanok today. He was supposed to uh, join me in this broadcast, but unfortunately the network there is so bad he couldn't join. But of course, yes, we are very much aware of what is happening in Bui, in Bafut, in the BLM, and today in the uh, Ngoketunja, of course, Bali, Bali too. 
So I want to know how people on the ground, particularly in the Bermuda axis, are feeling with uh, these developments. In, in short, you know, even if people are happy internally, but they cannot jubilate. Right. They cannot jubilate. But when you discuss with people, you see that you notice that there is happiness in everybody. Now, uh, Babenda is full, uh, full of uh, La Republic du Cameroon uh, soldiers. Uh, are, are you hearing from them at all? Are they saying anything? Do you see any signs of panic from them? There is panic among them. There is panic among them, but do you, you, you know with them, uh, they, they, they have, they, 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 they have, they, they used to say obedience before anything. So there is no way most of them cannot stay without coming to the northern zone or visiting the southern zone because at times they come here at gunpoint. If not, most of them tell us that they are already tired. They are pleading with the authorities to go for the dialogue. They are not finding it easy. Right. Talking about appealing, talking about appealing to the authorities, demonstrating their frustrations, General Brigadier General Inga, Inka Valerie was in Pinyin the other day, visibly weeping and appealing to the people of Pinyin to cooperate with them to expose the Ambazonian Restoration Forces. But People have interpreted to mean the frustrations on their part. They are dying in their numbers. What are you hearing there on Ground Zero? Exactly, Secretary Chris. That is pure frustration. Let me tell you, when he goes anywhere and is talking, those who come to listen to him are just by loving him. They, 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 they look at him to, in short, to, 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 to be a film actor. They are laughing at him. Because when he goes, nothing changes. Who is going to collaborate with who? Uh, who is going to collaborate with who? Right. It, it, it's just that you cannot come somewhere and then a few people will not come to listen to what you are saying. People will just come and say, okay, let us listen to what that man is saying. And he, when, when he goes, nothing happens. Who is going to collaborate with who? Good, good. So, uh... How is the security there on the ground? Are people afraid that they may be invaded? Because if you live in Ingo Ketunja, if you live in Ingo Ketunja, we advise you, we advise you, look for a hiding space, a hiding space for yourself. Because I have no doubt, I have no doubt, La Republic du Cameroon is going to descend on Ngo Ketunja, Bambalang, Bamesing, end up in particular, and they will dismay that town and anything, anything they find on their way. They don't care what it is, they will kill it. They will kill even every human being they find on their way. What are you hearing on the ground? So again, if you live in Ngo Ketunja, we advise you look for a hiding place. Look for a hiding place. Save yourself. So tell us in Bamenda, what are you hearing as far as security is concerned, sir? Secretary Chris, many people are aware of, of the modus operandi of French Cameroon. Because of the actions on Ground Zero for these past days, we know that is how they are going to react. They will descend and kill innocent civilians. They will descend and burn houses because of their frustration. Since yesterday till now, there's heavy deployment going to Jakiri and Oku, LGA. People are very much aware of that. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining. Most, 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 of, most often, they will cease internet in some of these places so that people cannot communicate. Information should not flow. I'm but sorry. I'm sorry. About, yes. I'm sorry. What did you say? Most often, what happened? I say most often, they cease internet, they cease communications in some of these uh, 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 local government areas so that information should not flow. Because most often, as they leave Bamenda up station and they are heading towards Kumbu or they are heading towards Belo, information circulates that people should take 
uh, 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 on hiding. Right. Well, uh, I think that is quite uh, interesting and something I have been uh, uh, thinking about recently to advise people. I think uh, everybody in Ambazonia, every family, every family in Ambazonia, if you do not have solar panels uh, at your homes, please try to get solar panels in your homes. Try to get flashlights, torch lights in every home, in every home. But solar panels are very, very, very critical because in the absence of electricity, you have network, you have phones, you can still charge your phones. So please, we are advising every, every home in Ambazonia, be it in the city or in the rural areas, get solar panels in your homes as your standby, your standby power uh, sources. Thank you, comrade, for joining me. I hope you guys uh, stay safe there on Ground Zero. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I bring you the most important announcement of this broadcast, of this broadcast, I like to remind, I like to remind all of you that this is our draft, our draft moment. Nothing is as important to this struggle as this draft moment. We see what our fighters are doing on ground zero. They are able to do this because of the funds, because of the funds you drafted last year. We are again at that moment, at that time, that we draft to support them. We will never give up. We will never give up on drafting until this war is over. And so, the challenge, the challenge is to all of you out there, please, I urge you, the drafts are coming up soon. Very soon, we're going to be announcing the first county that will be drafting. But why that preparation is being made and why the schedule is being set up, I want to encourage every one of you, you don't have to wait for the announcement to go out drafting for your county. All of you out there, I am very sure, I am very sure you know, you know exactly who the administrators, the leadership in your counties, in your counties are. Please reach out to them with your $1,000, your $1,000. The goal, the plan is for every Ambazonian, especially in, Euro, in Europe, in the USA, to draft at least $1,000. $1,000. If, but if you cannot do $1,000, maybe you can do $500. But please, we need to fund these our heroes. We need to fund these our heroes on ground zero. Call your county leaders. Call your LGA leaders and draft, and draft, and draft. Let us make sure that these boys know we are all excited. We are all excited with what they are doing out there. So please, again, before the schedule for the, uh, for the draft come up, you can start today. You can start today drafting. You can start today drafting for your county or your LGA. Don't wait until the die minute. This year's draft, we want cash. We want cash. So please, you have the money at hand in the bank, pay it now. Let's see more happening on ground zero. Let's see the firepower that we talked about. Let it begin to happen. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, I will bring you the most important, the most important announcement, the most important announcement of this broadcast. The most important announcement of this broadcast. And you find the title on your screen. You find the title on your screen. Exclusive. La République du Cameroon. Pulling out, pulling out of Libya, ladies and gentlemen, 
That is big news. That is big news. And I want to bring you some of the details about that pulling out at this moment. Again, it's a day of excitement in this struggle. According to the title, BLM falling to Ambazonia. Fellow Ambazonians, we set out from the beginning of this independence restoration struggle to undo the institutional grab and assimilation that the Republic du Cameroon meted upon us since annexing and colonizing our territory and our people. Their systematic assimilation started with the ambush of our Anglo-Saxon educational system and then our common law system. We must never ever forget that this war, this war is a child of these two evils, annexation and assimilation. These were the immediate causes for this war. And the very reason our teachers and lawyers first took to the streets and were arrested, beaten up, and then thrown to jail. Some ran to exile and the struggle for independence restoration was born. Today, today, the 30th of April in the year of our Lord, 2021, the interim government of Ambazonia is happy to come to you with a good announcement that we have begun the exercise of actually taking back our red and bastardized institutions from La Republic of Cameroon's control. To put it more succinctly, the interim government is excited to announce today that we now have the first of our educational institution falling under our control. This is the story of its making. A few months ago, precisely at the beginning of the year, the interim government monitored carefully as La Republic du Cameroon Ministry of Education planned a pull out of all our teachers from Le BLM County. As I address you today, we are exhilarated to announce that all, and I mean all of La Republic du Cameroon teachers in all secondary vocational high schools and colleges, including GTC in Le BLM County, have been pulled out. The decision saw close to 700 teachers from all the secondary and high schools in Le BLM moved out to Meme, Coupe, Indian, and Faco counties in our territory. The interim government knows that all the Republic of Cameroon administrative offices had long ended operations in Menji. The BLM Colonial SDO and the Colonial DO for Fontaine Center, they operate from colonial territory in Cham. The mayors of all the three local governments in the county live and operate from out of the county. There is little to no police and gendarmes presence in the BLM as I speak. Their office structures have crumbled and un uninhabitable. The only sign of La Republic du Cameroon's presence in the BLM today are their three military camps in Menji, Azi and Alo. However, they will be totally taken out in the few months to come. That is for sure. As a result of this one victory, the pull out of their teachers from Libya, the county officials are working on immediate measures to begin reinstating Ambazonia's Anglo-Saxon educational system in the county. Going forward, therefore, all so-called government schools Government secondary schools, government high schools, government bilingual high schools, government technical schools, government teachers training college, etc. Anything, anything educational institution starting with the appellation government 
government, ladies and gentlemen, has been officially banned, banned in Libya. In the same spirit, so-called bilingual education is hereby abolished in all classrooms in the BLM, the era of smokescreen bilingual education that was crafted to serve as a tool to brainwash, assimilate us, and eviscerate our cultural identity is gone and gone for good. Bilingual instructors or teachers of any kind are therefore prohibited in any school or college in Libya. The English language as in the days of our independence shall remain, shall remain the only language of instructions in all community schools and colleges in the county. The French language shall cease to be a subject taught in any school in the county. Going forward also, all schools and colleges in the BLM shall be named after the immediate communities in which they are located. That means that former GBHS Menji will now be called Menji Community High School, Alo Community High School, Wabane Community High School, Azi Community High School, Liwo or Fortabon Community High School, and Mogbin Community School in this order. In civilized societies, by the way, as we know it in the West, government has no business, no business running schools. Government provides regulation, some financial support, and curriculum. The communities run the schools and shape them to the needs of the particular community. In fact, the city or town councils run the school system, not some government. This is what we hope to achieve in all of Amazonia. In our new country, government shall have no power over your schools. The community own and operate these schools. The BLM will lead the way. And slowly, slowly but surely, other counties will pick it up from there. The BLM county officials are currently working with the Department of Education here at the interim government to begin implementation of the community school structure and curriculum. In the months ahead, the structure and curriculum will be announced to the public. In the absence of official security in Libya, a vacuum has been created there. For that reason, the county has also instructed the field marshal to begin recruitment and training of Libya community police. The community police will be responsible for keeping peace and order in the community. The local government areas of Wabane, Alo, and Fontaine in the months ahead shall seal and feel the presence of the community police. In view of these developments, ladies and gentlemen, the BLM people and I mean the IDPs, internally displaced persons who abandoned their home to escape the war, are hereby encouraged, encouraged, if they can, if they can, to once in a while go back and clean up their homes. We shouldn't be mistaken, however. This instruction is not for anyone to think of going back to settle home permanently. No. The advice is for intervals of visits and for cleanup purposes only. This is very important. We hope that this will save some of the homes that are at a collapsing point. Neither the county nor the interim government encourage anyone to think of going to settle home on a permanent basis as a simple stray bullet, a simple stray bullet can kill anyone. We are also not saying by this announcement 
that the war is over in Le BLM? Of course not. The war isn't over in Libya. It rages on and on until all the military installations of the Republic of Cameroon are dismantled. India soldiers surrender or pack and leave. We do not want any civilian to fall victim to a stray bullet or fall victim to the wrath of the Republic of Cameroon soldiers avenging any death of theirs as they are in the habit of doing each time pain pain is inflicted upon them they say that a journey of a thousand miles begin begin with one step these developments in the BLM are the beginning of a journey that will soon be undertaken ladies and gentlemen by every one of our counties fellow Amazonians remain strong and resistant there is victory inside our enemies are in shambles they are fainting and regretting why they called and supported this war in the first place and Bazonia isn't going to hit to any cause any cause of ceasefire not until all military formations of the Republic of Cameroon in our territory are dismantled and their soldiers and gendarmes withdrawn. If you have been sitting at the fence, again, if you have been sitting at the fence, the moment has come for you to leave the fence. Support this struggle. Stand for freedom and for freedom fighters and not with genocide perpetrators. Support the drive draft for your county and for your local government you shall never never again never regret that you did even if you are on ground zero this is the time your county needs your money and your support reach out to us to the interim government and we will direct you on how to draft ambazonians the two cubes of sugar have turned into two cubes of iron and not even fire can dismantle it. God bless you and God bless Ambazonia.